Hello. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about when you should listen to your head, that is your rational thought and prioritizing your goals and your outcomes, and when you should listen to your heart and your emotion and your intuitive feeling. It feels almost like there's two sides now to self-improvement on social media, and that is the kind of stay hard, David Goggins, power through your emotions type of self-improvement that we see a lot with men, and then a more intuitive, free-flowing kind of almost feminine self-improvement that focuses on things like love and nature and living with your body, but it's not a privilege that everyone gets. I know I myself would love to be in that sort of feminine energy and feminine headspace, but in order to achieve that, you need to either have someone provide for you monetarily because, of course, existence costs money, or you need to become that provider for yourself, which is certainly the more difficult of the two and not necessarily the first path that I recommend. But in today's day and age, it's often very difficult and time consuming to just sort of sit around and wait for someone to be the masculine to your feminine. Of course there are a lot of things you can do in the meantime, but for me at least, the goal has always been to live in that holy, loving and intuitive state. It's just that I and most people aren't in a financial position at the moment to live that and embody that. It can be difficult to know when to listen to things like your intuition and your emotions, when to listen when your body is saying no, or when you should power through and when you should you know, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. And it's especially a difficult thing to navigate as a woman, someone whose hormonal cycle is very different to the male hormonal cycle, and so your sort of capabilities and moods and work focus change from different phases in your cycle. To me, the analogy of masculine and feminine version of self-improvement works very well in the idea of which path should you take, what should you listen to. And it's almost exemplified, I think, in the sexual act, which sounds a little bit weird when I first say it, but David Data outlines this very well, where he talks about the fact that the masculine is always going either forward or backwards, as in entering or retreating, and the feminine is always either opening or closing, either being receptive and open to love or closing to it. I think ultimately, if you're working towards any sort of career or monetary or financial goal, then unfortunately living intuitively and listening to your emotions and living by them is just not congruent with that. Honestly, nothing would ever get done if business owners and CEOs decided day to day, oh, today I'm feeling sad, let me sit in bed all day. And for some people that is a good and a healthy approach, but not if you have high ambitions, if you're very goal-driven and you have things that you want to necessarily achieve. If your goal and your purpose at the moment is to move through life lovingly and freely and flowingly, not worrying about things like career or ambition, then absolutely live intuitively and in a way that embodies your core spirit. But if you do that with no support, very often there will be real world consequences. You know, no one wants to end up homeless or without a job necessarily. So keep in mind, I guess, your core essence when you are working towards something like a career. Don't lose that part of yourself entirely and honour it even when life demands things of you, like working towards a monetary goal or if you have high ambitions. The thing I think you have to remember though, if you are someone who is a woman, is that there are literal hormonal consequences a lot of the time when you don't listen to your body and to intuitively your needs. For example, there is a time in the month, I'm studying this at the moment for a course I'm making, but there is a literal time in the month where if you allow yourself to be stressed, that is if you allow your cortisol levels to become high, cortisol is like the stress hormone, then it actually has serious bodily consequences for you because stress essentially destroys progesterone, which is the hormone that all women have and that essentially sort of calms you down, it keeps you regular and it tells you everything is going to be okay essentially. But if you ignore that and if you allow your stress levels to sort of go up during this time in the month then it can have serious effects on your fertility and your bodily health. Like during this time stress and low progesterone means that PMS symptoms are at an all-time high. Very often people skip their period and I've heard of multiple times where women are unable to get pregnant because they are so stressed with things like work and with you know real world demands and that is why one of the biggest pieces of advice that they give you if you're struggling to conceive is to take some time off from your work, go on a holiday, go relax, and then 
allow your cortisol levels to drop, allow your progesterone to rise, and then your body will be functioning as it should, essentially. I really don't think I got the point well enough across in this video. Can we just take a second to appreciate the fact that if you are literally too stressed, your body will not be able to conceive a child. Like your primary reproductive function from a biological point of view is to be able to carry a child, right? Like that is the point of evolution and of carrying down your genes. If you are too stressed, if your cortisol levels are too high at the wrong time in the month, you will not be able to have a baby. And the reason for that, I forgot to mention this in the video, is because your body doesn't know the difference between being chased by a tiger and being stressed at work. Like you literally produce the same hormonal response that is a spike in cortisol as if you were being chased by a tiger. Like that is insane and that is very much something to remember. There are different times in the month where your body is more well equipped to handle cortisol and more stressful work situations but it's only at a specific time in the month whereas the male hormonal system it works very differently. Yes, high stress is also bad for men, but it doesn't have the same hormonal and fertility consequences that it does for women. In fact, this is actually really interesting, but women during sex release a hormone called oxytocin, which is like a love sort of bonding hormone. Men actually don't release much oxytocin at all during sex. They release something similar called vasopressin, which is like similarly a love and a bonding hormone they actually release it more towards their partner when they are in stressful situations. That means that men's bodies are literally equipped to bond and to grow and to love through stress, whereas women bond and love and grow through sex and through physical intimacy. I don't know, I thought that was really interesting. I realized that the way that the world works at the moment is not necessarily congruent to or in alignment with, you know, the majority of us being able to live freely and happily and in a way that is in accordance with sort of our core nature of either masculine or feminine or the very small percentage of which who are neutral but I think the best choice to make is to just be aware of your own internal motivators and drives and of your own core and that sort of thing and be aware don't you know push yourself so far that it becomes impossible but try hard enough to get yourself out of your comfort zone and it's difficult to know the difference between the two i realize that and it's often difficult to know the difference between the two and to know how far to push yourself i realize that but that comes with time i guess and with being able to listen to yourself although i i used to not be able to tell the difference between a healthy challenge and something that was literally impossible for me but over time i've now come to realize that you know i know my limits i know if I don't want to do something, sometimes it's good for me to push through it and sometimes it isn't. It's one of those things that is hard to make broad sweeping statements at, at this time in my life anyway. But I think that's all I really have to say for today. God bless and goodbye.